Hi, my name's Clem Schlegel uh, from the Australian Government Department of Health. Uh, this is submission number 55, using social media data analysis to assist vaccine safety monitoring of COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, so special thanks to team members uh, from both the Department of Health and uh, University of Technology Sydney's um, uh, Australian Artificial Intell Intelligence Institute. So, uh, so myself, uh, Cover One, Michael Agnew, Leah Girard, Warren Arndt, and Alison Clark are from uh, uh, Department of Health. Uh, Xu Ping Peng, uh, Ta Shen, Gudong Wong are from uh, University of Technology Sydney. Um, and both Alvin and Leah are doing PhDs at, uh, with this research team at University of, Sydney, oh, University of Technology Sydney. Okay, so what this piece of work, um, uh, if, what we're going to talk about today is using social media to identify adverse events related to COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, so this was a project we uh, carried out at the start of the year uh, before vaccines came to Australia and we were particularly interested in um, new and emerging adverse events and whether, whether it was possible to detect these uh, on social media. Uh, this is a proof of concept project, so we never used it to inform official adverse event reporting channels. Uh, it was rather, it's, it, it's a proof of concept just to see the, the possibilities and, and the usefulness of, of, of such a model. Uh, what we ended up doing was, was uh, using deep learning techniques uh, with the, deep learning models, which we deployed into a cloud environment. Uh, and we, we, um, we, we were uh, consuming tweets in almost real time from Twitter, uh, analyzing these and pushing these through to a, um, uh, a dashboard for further analysis with um, extracted adverse events, uh, normalized to, to um, standard clinical terms. Cool, so let's get started. Um, Right, so the outline for today's presentation, uh, we're just gonna run through a bit of a background, um, a lit review, uh, research objectives, data collection and methodology, results, summary and conclusions, uh, some limitations of the, the, the work and some future directions uh, and, and, and some acknowledgements and references. Okay, so we've all been, I think we've all been quite surprised at the, the, um, the rapid development of COVID-19 vaccines, uh, it's, it seems that, that the speed at which these have been developed and also approved by regulators around the world is quite unprecedented. Uh, and like any, any, any medicine that comes onto the market, um, we expect to see adverse events that aren't picked up in clinical trials. Uh, so uh, so lo lo like other medicines, COVID-19 vaccines are subject to ongoing monitoring. Uh, once they're on the market after approval uh, in Australia and internationally to better understand their safety profile when used outside of standard clinical trial conditions. Uh, in Australia, this work is carried out by the Commonwealth Department of Health. Uh, the monitoring is known as pharmacovigilance um, in the general sense. And, we, and this focuses on detecting, investigating and responding to emerging safety issues. Uh, so, so one important component of this is analysis of adverse events. Uh, so adverse events are unintended and sometimes harmful occurrences associated with the use of a therapeutic good. So serious adverse event reporting is mandatory uh, for medicine sponsors um, and is encouraged for healthcare professionals. Uh, reporting by consumers is voluntary though. So one of the reasons for this project was uh, we were just curious to see whether and, and to what extent there was a gap between um, what was being reported through official channels and uh, what was being, say, discussed in social media. Um, so there's a, we, we, we believe that quite a lot of adverse events um, are never reported. So we were just curious to see what, uh, what was coming through um, sort of more unofficial um, sources of information. Okay. Okay, so... Um, so social media, uh, particularly Twitter, uh, is um, it has has uh, it is a place where a lot of users do share health related um, information. So it's a, it's a, it's a potentially a good source uh, uh, for public health research, um, and 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 furthermore, it's it's uh, it's public 
uh, in, in the case of Twitter, uh, it's, it's free to access Twitter data. It's easy to collect uh, and you can analyze the information in, in near real time. Uh, so in addition to easy data gathering, uh, I guess the flip side is you've got vast amounts of data uh, and it's in a very um, rather unstructured form. Uh, so you need um, rather than teams of people reading through the tweets, uh, it's much more efficient to train uh, some algorithms. So we use some techniques from, that, uh, from machine learning, uh, in particular natural language processing, um, to better understand, like to, to, to extract meaning, to automate that sort of um, scanning through, through tweets and extracting adverse events related to having received a COVID vaccine as self-reported by Twitter users. Uh, so we, uh, we based our work on uh, what we call transforming neural networks or um, uh, pre-trained models, which are uh, a sort of state-of-the-art technology introduced by Google several years ago. Uh, so so we, we stacked several models, um, but like models, uh, performing various tasks in, in, in sequence uh, to, to um, perform our, our, our sort of task. So th these models tend to uh, go through a process called pre-training where you can train them on vast amounts of data on a roughly similar task. Uh, but what this does is when you do a, a step called fine tuning where you, you're training the model to do a very specific um, task such as a classification or something like that, uh, you don't need as much uh, additional examples of training data to do that fine tuning training step. So it, so it speeds up. Um, and, and, and can, can result in better performance uh, overall for, 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 um, for the task you're trying to do. Right, so just as a quick lit review, uh, so Twitter, Twitter data has already been used um, to identify adverse events from medicines using a variety of different techniques. Um, there's, a, there's a paper that is in, in 2021, July 2021, there's a preprint which uh, following a roughly similar process to what we do, um, we've we've done a little, some things a little bit differently. Um, the Kalyan Sanjeev paper is roughly there's some rough similarities, um, uh, and there's some earlier work which uses different technologies, so it doesn't use transforming neural networks. Um, there's been some work to identify symptoms from individuals diagnosed with COVID-19. Uh, so these studies have revealed that Twitter data can be used to understand self-reported symptoms from COVID-19. Uh, um, and, and some of these are identified prior to the symptoms being. So Gu uh, in 2020 found that some of these symptoms were identified prior to being announced by the um, CDC. Um, uh, other studies have found that Twitter data can be used to better understand public attitudes and concerns uh, towards the COVID-19 pandemic and vaccines. Uh, so research gaps. Uh, we did a quick review. As I mentioned, we did this piece of work at the start of the year. In January, we sort of was a big focus, January, February. Um, and at that time, um, we couldn't find anything that was... Um, using it, these kinds of techniques to COVID-19 vaccine symptoms or adverse events. Um, and we additionally found that whether, yeah, while there was some work in, in, in this space, there wasn't very much that was using uh, transforming neural networks. Um, one of the challenges, the ongoing challenges with social media data is, is uh, trying to analyze in formal language. Uh, so, so social media is particularly tricky. Um, so research objectives. So, for this particular project, as, as we've mentioned, we were um, to break it down. So we, we wanted to automatically identify consumer reported symptoms from COVID-19 vaccines um, using Twitter data. Uh, so we sort of broke this down into uh, the first step is identifying tweets where consumers or users self-report having had a COVID-19 vaccine, um, identify and extract symptoms relating to the vaccine. Uh, so they have to relate to the vaccines. Tweets can contain other you know, users can talk about other, you know, pre-existing conditions or other experiences that they've had in the past. And the trick here is really trying to only pull out the symptoms that are, that the user claims to have been caused as a result of having received the vaccine. Um, and then we, what we do is we map the extracted symptoms to, we normalise those to standard terminology. 
So, uh, so the process, um, there's, there's really th uh, three really major kind of steps. So the first is really the, the data collection filtering. So here we've got a, uh, um, a script which pulls tweets from Twitter. Um, and um, then we've got a, a, a neural network model which identifies tweets that contain some paraphrase of I received a COVID vaccine. Uh, and then we identify and extract symptoms uh, that are related to having received the COVID vaccine. And then we map those to uh, normalised terminology used in, a, uh, in, in MEDRA, the Medical Dictionary for Regulatory Activities, which is a sort of standard, um, which contains a standard set of terms used in, in pharmacovigilance activities. Uh, and then these are pushed through to a, um, a, a dashboard. So we use in the Department of Health ClickSense. Um, we also, the, the, we also uh, perform some inference on users, so age buckets, genders, things like that. Um, just to get a bit of a sense of um, the, the, the demographic um, profile of different um, mentioned uh, adverse, um, adverse events. Right, so we collected tweets worldwide, not just from Australia, but globally. Um, we ran this fr from uh, the 15th of February 2021 to the 9th of June, uh, collecting tweets over that period. And that was running in almost real time over that period. Um, retweets and non-English tweets were excluded. Uh, so the, the search query we, we used was very general. All we were looking for was uh, any tweet that contained the word Pfizer or Moderna or AstraZeneca or BioNTech. Um, so this is obviously quite a large volume of tweets that collected that contain these words. Um, and then that, that first sort of stage we use a, um, a, a classifier, a neural network that we've trained to identify tweets that contain a, a paraphrase of I received a COVID vaccine. Okay, so um, it was a fairly strong filter. Um, you know, we wanted a fairly high quality coming through, so we're probably excluding a lot of relevant tweets. Um, but what we collected was uh, 319, roughly 319,000 tweets from 234,000 users. Right, so just to give an idea of um, how this works. So uh, an example tweet is, I received my first shot of the Pfizer COVID vaccine. It gave me a high temperature and I've been feeling a bit fluid. So the, we've got a, a, a piece of the, we've got one model. Um, uh, it performs a, um, in the technical sense, it performs a question and answering um, task. We're specifically interested in extracting the symptoms that are related to having received the vaccine um, and not the symptoms in the, the, um, the tweet. Uh, so that's what this kind of this part of the, the model does. Um, so in this case, we will pull out, it gave me a high temperature and I've been feeling a bit fluid. Uh, extraction. So the next piece is uh, extracting out the individual symptoms. Um, so uh, without further processing. So here we've got high temperature and feeling a bit fluid. And for this piece, we use something, uh, uh, a task called named entity recognition, um, a named entity recognition model. Uh, and then the final piece is mapping those extracted symptoms to standard technology. So here we use a, uh, a model that performs a task called semantic text similarity, where we're trying to match to uh, terms in MEDRA that have um, similar similar meanings. Okay, so data visualization analysis. Uh, so this was, these are some example charts that um, we're producing in our uh, uh, dashboards. Um, so we can see, um, you know, you can do all sorts of analysis. You can um, look at different rates of symptoms by um, vaccines. Um, you can drill down by country. Uh, you can look at um, symptoms by age and gender. Uh, so we, we uh, results. So we uh, evaluated the data pipeline in three stages. Um, so the data filtering stage, the symptom extraction, and, and measure mapping. Um, so what we've got here is just some broad uh, metrics. Um, so the performance is 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 high. We this is generally good performance um, for these particular metrics. 
so as a result, so we had 58% um, of our Twitter users um, who reported having received the COVID vaccine didn't uh, mention any symptoms. Um, so the, the top symptoms recorded, we included sore arm. It's not a major term, but we just popped it in there as, a, as an extra symptom because it was uh, so commonly mentioned. Um, the top symptoms include sore arm, fatigue, soreness, and headache. You can see um, Pfizer, and Moderna, and AstraZeneca. Pfizer and Moderna seem to have fairly similar profiles, and then AstraZeneca is a little bit different. Uh, and then we sort of did a comparison against uh, clinical trial data. So uh, in particular, I think um, the AstraZeneca clinical trial data, we've got both the control group and the, uh, the, the exposure group um, percentages here. So I think that difference there is probably what we want to be comparing against um, the self-reported um, symptoms. Uh, and you can see there's, there's a bit of difference here. Um, and, and, and probably the, the, uh, it's probably worthwhile comparing against um, survey, other, other survey data as well, because um, some of these rates are, are quite different. Uh, so overall, it appears that the symptom rates uh, reported are tend to be lower than social media. Um, so for example, uh, fatigue, was um, identified by 53% of individuals in the AstraZeneca um, clinical trial. 38% of the control group indicated they had fatigue. So this indicates the symptom rate from the vaccine may be closer to around 15%. Uh, what we get here is 6%. So um, yeah, there is some variation with, with what people self-report on, on, on social media. Okay, so we explored symptoms that were mentioned in tweets but not included in the product information documents, um, which that data uh, contains, um, that, uh, those, those documents contain data from clinical trials. Um, so lymphado, lymph lymphadenopathy, which is swollen lymph nodes, uh, was mentioned in tweets for both Pfizer and AstraZeneca recipients. However, this adverse reaction was not present in the AstraZeneca clinical trials data. Uh, published in the sponsor supplied product information document in February 2021. Um, it was, however, picked up through through separate channels to the Department of Health. But what we found using social media was uh, that we were picking this up through Twitter um, before this was picked up in that, those initial um, clinical trial results. Um, So, um, and subsequently, um, in, in April 2021, the, um, the product information was updated to include um, new adverse drug reactions. One of those new reactions was lymphadenopathy. So, um, yeah, this, this kind of shows the utility of the tool. Uh, as I said, it was a proof of concept. Um, we were more interested in, in, in whether this could, um, the extent to which this could be useful for, for generating warm leads. Um, and, and, and this shows that there is definite problems with this, this type of tool. Okay, so limitations. So we, we didn't get a, much of an opportunity to really um, compare different variations in architecture. We had some um, thoughts and ideas around um, possible different architectures and more efficiency and things like that. Um, uh, so that's kind of, there's, there's a lot of improvements I'm sure we made through different architectures. Uh, we didn't manage to do a huge amount of manual labeling and that would improve performance as well. Um, for user so socio-demographics information, again, that's another substantial potential, potentially substantial piece of work that could be done um, to get um, uh, further improvements there um, around the demographic information. Um, so yeah, so some additional fine tuning and optimizing was still required. We, we we had good performance, but we could definitely uh, improve performance with with um, some more 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 work. Um, so future directions are to compare um, model performance with other other pre-trained models um, to label additional data to improve performance of filtering and to improve um, extensive demographics. Um, cool. So that's our summary and conclusions. So. Yeah, so that was we we succeeded, we succeeded in, in 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 building a product that was able to identify adverse events from social media, um, and there's additional work that could be done to to improve as well. So, acknowledgements. 
uh, references. And thank you very much.